Who was Shoko Asahara? He was born Chizuo Matsumoto on March 2, 1955. Little did the world know, though, that Matsumoto would become the head of one of the most notorious cults in world history, Am Shinrikyo. Matsumoto was born disabled with infantile glaucoma. He was left partially blind in his right eye during his early childhood and eventually lost all sight in his left eye. He attended a high school for the blind even though he still had partial sight. It is said while in school that he started displaying many antisocial traits and some behavior that was downright disturbing. Since he still had some ability to see, he was often put in positions by his teachers to help assist with other classmates who were completely blind. He started to bring the students into walls, beat them, steal their money, and make them perform acts that were downright degrading. They were completely helpless because being blind, they were not able to identify them. He would use his charm and master manipulation tactics to ever avoid getting caught by his teachers. In 1977, he ended up marrying and tried to get into the University of Tokyo. He ended up failing the admissions test, not once, but twice. He eventually decided to study Chinese medicine instead. In 1981, he was charged in Japanese court for unlawfully selling drugs and practicing medicine without a license. He was fined and forced to sell his business, but soon after, he decided he needed to choose a different path in life. He underwent a spiritual experience. He changed his name from Chizue Matsumoto to who he's known today as Shoko Asahara. He started to immerse himself in a wide array of philosophies and religions of not only Eastern Asian culture, but those of the West, and it soon engulfed his life and way of thinking. The 80s was a period in Japanese society that saw the birth of new religious movements, with Aum Shinrikyo being one that would be dubbed as a neo-new religion. Members were floaters of other spiritual bodies and religious groups who were looking for something to fulfill the missing pieces in their lives. Aum Shinrikyo's foundation was based on religious syncretism. The faith during the early years were built on spiritual principles of Tibetan Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism. These religious bodies were seen as one sharing common beliefs and training the body through ascetic practices. Asahara was very into yoga, as well as kudalani, original life force, chakras, and the ability to develop psychic powers. These seem innocent enough, and those spiritualities mentioned are very peaceful originally. But they soon morphed into a vengeful monstrosity under Asahara's dark, demented mentality. The more the movement continued to grow, the more apocalyptic ideas came to the forefront. These doomed days views soon evolved into a mindset of an impending war, one in which the group would be the lone survivors. Asahara prophesied that this would happen either in 1996 or between 99 and 2003. He claimed that the world would be brought into the Armageddon by the United States, who he stated would start World War III with Japan. Asahara began recruiting members from a small yoga circle that he ran. Members lived in a sangha, a commune consisting of seekers who were looking to fully devote themselves to their new spiritual path. They eventually moved from the small studio and commune as the movement grew. Asahara was described by some scholars as charismatic, one of his many qualities that helped him build such a strong body of devoted individuals. Michiko Mayakawa in her paper, Syncretism in Japanese New Religions, The Case of Amshinukyo and Aleph, discusses Asahara's charisma and the roles he played in the movement by breaking up into four categories, stating, He was an exemplary seeker, a senior practitioner, and what his followers believed to be essential Buddhism, becoming Buddha through attaining spiritual liberation. Second, he was a guru, good at presenting himself as a transmitter or interpreter of great traditions. He was able to help his followers who were navigating their spiritual quest and help them attain spiritual growth. In 1987, he even met the Dalai Lama and other high priests of Tibetan Buddhism. After his visit, Asahara began, and with great confidence, rebranding himself as a religious guru. In 1987, the group officially took on the name Am Shinrikyo, announcing their group would be going down a more Mahayana path of Buddhism. This path focuses more on the salvation of others. He preached that he was the first enlightened one since Buddha himself. 
The numbers in Om continue to grow with great speed. Moving on from a small yoga circle, Asahara moved his focus onto young university students, graduates, many who were from influential families, people overall that were seeking a more meaningful existence. After officially being recognized by the Japanese government as a religion in 1989, the religious corporation laws gave Om the right to pursue its religious activities with minimal oversight by the Japanese authorities. They were given tax benefits, rights to own property, special shelters, and protection from state and external interference. The authorities were then prevented from investigating the group's doctrine and the means by which or how they raised revenue. They quickly began acquiring properties, buildings, and even with some of those being overseas. In 1989, they had 300 shakashas, full-time followers of the faith who had devoted themselves entirely, renouncing the world. Between 1992 and 1995, membership increased worldwide from 10 to 50,000. They had branch offices in six countries, and their net worth grew to around $100 billion. How did a cult like Aum Shinriko bring in around $100 billion? They brought in money through donations, tithing by cult members, sale of cult-related paraphernalia, manufacture of illegal drugs, and hosting of seminars and training courses. They even undertook various commercial endeavors, such as chain restaurants, as well as computer and software manufacturing companies. Around the 90s, there was also bribes made to local Japanese officials and some business done with the Yakuza. They also tried to enter politics as well. 24 of Aum's followers and Asahara made attempts to enter the political arena. In order to reach Aum's ultimate goal, Asahara deemed it necessary to get involved in the politics. He needed to save the world from Armageddon and his prophecy of war between America and Japan. So getting into politics was extremely important. His campaigning, though, was marked as having unethical practices. He would spy on opponents and use intimidation practices. It is by no surprise that he and his 24 followers were defeated. This changed the course of Asahara's teachings, from saving the world from Armageddon to protecting its followers. Asahara had full control about what would be included in the community belief system. His preaching about having already experienced liberation, as laid out in the Buddhist scriptures, was enough evidence of his mystical powers to gain the trust of his followers. He was beginning to be seen as a prophet, and eventually as a living god, conveying religious messages of god Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. Asahara believed and preached that he was the modern-day embodiment of Shiva, a living god. His deeds and words became the law and the group's sacred text. In 1994, the Vahriyana textbook was written and consisted of many of his talks and sermons that he had delivered between 1988 and 1994. This was one of the most important texts that his followers of Aum would come to know. Last, Asahara was seen as a savior, turning himself into a Christ-like being. He convinced his followers that he was able to take over the pain and troubles they had, which he would do through initiations that he practiced. He was self-sacrificing himself by giving them positive energy and absorbing their negative energy, a kind of karmic transfer of sorts. This caused him to be regarded as a savior-like figure of the world. He actually wrote a publication of four-volume books called Declaring Myself the Christ between 1991 and 1993. His self-sacrifice of positive spiritual energy to the world gave him that title. As Asahara became more convinced that he was a god, his teachings went from peaceful yoga and meditations towards a more radical route. He kept his followers under his control through mind control techniques like sleep and food deprivation and even administered illicit drugs. They were forced to give up all of their finances upon joining the cult, making them financially dependent on the group. If they tried to leave, they were tracked down, kidnapped, and some even murdered. As early as 1988, the group left its mostly peaceful roots behind and slowly fell into more violent group behavior. One of Aum's members drowned by accident during one of their routine ritual exercises. Asahara demanded that they burn and dispose of the corpse to evade the authorities. People that left or attempted to leave the cult ended up being killed. By the end of 1989 and the beginning of 1990, the cult had around 4,000 plus members. Families of the cult members became concerned and voiced their concerns to authorities and the government. In May 1989, one of the lawyers, Tsutsumi Sakamoto, who was representing these family members, ended up disappearing with his wife and one-year-old son. Asahara couldn't afford any bad publicity or lose any more members. Sakamoto was representing 23 cases for people who were trying to leave the cult. The entire family disappeared overnight. When the other family members went to the Sakamoto home, the family was gone and their bedding had mysteriously disappeared. Sakamoto's mother found a badge with the Alm cult symbol on the second floor of the family's home. The local police refused to investigate the possibility, though. The media got wind of the police's reluctancy to investigate Om's role in the disappearance of the Sakamoto family. 
After increased pressure on the police after the story made headlines, an entire 16 days after their disappearance, the police finally began an official investigation. Alm refused the request for interviews and Hasahara ended up going underground. The cult was never charged and the investigation ended up fizzling out. In 1995, the family's bodies were discovered in three different remote mountainous regions of Japan. In the early 1990s, the cult purchased land in Australia. They had the intention of prospecting for uranium in order to build nuclear weapons, as well as create biological weapons. Due to lacking some technical skills, among many other reasons, they were not able to achieve the biological weapons they had strived so hard for. That is when they started to turn their attention to chemical warfare. It is reported that they have successfully manufactured small quantities of phosgen, hydrogen cyanide, salmon, GF, and VX nerve agents, among many others. Their most successful chemical weapon, though, was sarin, which they were able to manufacture in large quantities, which is which they used in the 1995 subway attacks in Tokyo. Alm started to have a powerful presence in Russia and build a strong relationship with Russian authorities. They had donated $14 million in cash to the Russian government, as well as given them various supplies and computers. They had purchased military hardware from the former Soviet Union. That included, but was not limited to, AK-47s, assault rifles, production equipment to manufacture its own version in Japan, and an M-17 military transport helicopter. They then undertook a massive recruiting campaign and gave favoritism with the Russian media. The head of the Russian Security Council welcomed them. Alm has since then rebranded as Alep and still has strong roots in Russia, which is still raising concern with world leaders. Putting all the belief in Asahara led to continuously changing theological teachings based on his emotions and mental instability. This, along with shifting the spiritual focus from individual salvation to a collective goal, is what eventually turned Alm down the darkest path towards biological warfare and chemical warfare. Something that was considered a collective work of the group would be daily duties of members manufacturing guns or poisonous gas, as well as other criminal activities. Alm would be known in and outside of Japan as having the most extensive non-state biological weapons program ever on earth as of 2011. It brought into light the real threat of bioterrorism, but this wasn't really brought to light because Japanese authorities were more focused on chemical warfare after the Tokyo subway attacks in 1995. Richard Donzig put forth extensive research and published Om Shinrikyo, Insights to How Terrorists Develop Biological and Chemical Weapons. Though Om's biological weapons program was an overall failure, it still brought a turning point of what domestic and international terrorism could be. They were able to obtain some biological agents, which was unheard of at the time. They acquired two botulinum neurotoxins from Clostridium botulinum and B. anthracis, which is anthrax. Botulinum was obtained after 1990. These toxins came from cultures that they obtained from soil in Japan as well as South America. Sea botulinum would be in the soil samples with thousands of other bacterial and fungal species. They made homemade fermenters in order to maintain an oxygen-free environment needed to keep this bacterium. According to later interviews with cult members, an estimated total production of 450 metric tons of baculus natto, an aerobic bacterium, was produced. Tests of the substance though ended up not being as toxic as the group had hoped it would be. They tried using the liquid in live runs outside two U.S. naval bases, Narita Airport, the Japanese Diet, and the Imperial Palace. No illnesses were reported. In the fall of the 1990s, three of Alm's leaders were arrested for purchasing land fraudulently. The land already had chemical production facilities under construction. This spooked the members of the possibility of police raids, so they began to dismantle all chemical and biological weapon facilities. Around 1992, the group got a hold of other chemical weapons through their cultivation methods and attempted to release it into the subway, but those efforts also failed. During this year, they also began to focus more on B. anthracis, the bacterium that causes anthrax. They even went as far as to attempt to steal a strain from a laboratory. They did end up obtaining a strain of it eventually by means of a member who had completed undergraduate studies in agricultural and veterinary medicine. The university he graduated from had an extensive anthrax collection. One of the strains that was collected by police ended up closely matching those of the university. In 1993, on began their attempts at mass producing bee anthracis. People around their manufacturing area said that there was a gelatinous substance and a foul odor around the neighborhood. Cult members said they were successful at killing local birds and local pets, though the extent of truth in these situations are both a bit murky. 
According to an article by Erica Simons in Faith, Fanaticism, and Fear, Amishan Rikyo, the Birth and Death of a Terrorist Organization, in 1993, the cult invested an estimated $30 million in an effort to create their chemical weapons. They were able to recruit scientists and skilled workers and utilize extensive facilities equipped with computer-controlled reactors and industrial packaging capabilities. In one of its facilities, in Kamakusiki, they were able to produce 70-plus tons of sarin alone. What is sarin? It is an odorless, tasteless, colorless, and can either be liquid or vapor. It is also extremely toxic. It was developed during the 1930s as a pesticide and later used in the Nazi death camps gas chambers. It can lead to death in 1 to 10 minutes after inhalation and is 20 times more deadly than cyanide. Even the tiniest of doses can prove fatal. It prevents the body from regulating nerve impulses and leads to fatigue and loss of bodily functions. People exposed to sarin end up convulsing, fall into a coma and paralysis, and suffocate if there is no intervention. Before the 1995 attack, there were attempts at other major attractions around Japan. One of these instances took place in the area surrounding the Japanese parliament in Tokyo. They would use a truck carrying Clostridium botulinum, the basis for botulism, and that was also outfitted with a spraying device. Their goal was to kill as many government officials as possible. They did in fact end up spraying the chemical, but the chemical proved to be ineffective. Another notable attempt at a chemical attack took place shortly after the previously mentioned one. Operatives of AM went atop a building roof and dispersed anthrax into the roof's high-powered fan unit. No citizens were injured, but the com they did complain about bad odor, and their pets ended up dying. Authorities later declared it had been caused by an exposure to a toxic agent. They tracked it back to AM eventually, but they claimed they had released a substance that was mixed with perfumes and oils to spiritually cleanse the area. They accepted this reasoning. By 1995, Amshin Rikyu had 10,000 members in Japan alone and controlled over two dozen properties in the country, as well as had offices around the world, including the United States. Though group enrollment was at its height, Asahara started to lose control over some of his subjects. One of these, a 62-year-old woman who devoted a great amount of time and most of her savings, was trying to flee the group. She left and went into hiding for quite some time. Asahara ended up sending out some of his operatives to search for her, but they were unable to locate her at the end. In order to get her out of hiding, the cult members kidnapped and murdered her 68-year-old brother. This would be one fatal mistake for the group. Leading up to the subway attack, authorities had grown extremely suspicious about the activities and the mysterious deaths surrounding the Aum Shinrikyo group. They were unable to do much action on their suspicions, though, due to strong government regulations protecting religious groups in Japan. As mentioned previously with the story of the fleeing member, the police made the connection to Aum being behind the kidnapping and murder of her brother. They launched a highly secretive operation, the largest of its kind, into the group. Unfortunately, there were AM operatives working within the police force undercover, and they notified the cult of the ongoing investigation. The group went into full swing, destroying any evidence, manufactured chem chemicals, anything illegal in nature. Azhara went into hiding as well, where he would direct his group for several months. March 20th, 1995. The beautiful landscape of Japan usually peaceful and known for its low crime rate, would be shaken to its core. Soon, a chemical terrorist attack would be underway in the Tokyo subway stations during rush hour. The attack took place at Kasumigaseki Station. This station was located under several government offices, as well as the National Police Headquarters, which is part of the reason this particular station was chosen. The attack was carried out by five operatives from Om. They delivered sealed packages that they had hidden in newspapers on separate subway cars. They punctured each one before they abandoned them. The liquid sarin quickly vaporized, spreading into the air with quite speed. Soon after, people began suffering symptoms from the sarin exposure. These symptoms included severe eye irritation, coughing, choking, labored breathing, vomiting, and convulsions. Some even lost consciousness. A hundred ambulances and over 1,300 medical personnel were soon dispatched to the scene. 600 people were taken by ambulances to local hospitals, while 4,000 people made it to medical facilities by foot, their cars, or taxis. Panic was rampant at the scene and throughout Japan. In the end, 12 people died and around 5,500 people were injured. Casualties and affected would have been higher if it wasn't for the powerful air exchange system in the subway that proved rather effective and removed much of the toxin from the air. 
Japan was not used to such attacks. There was also so much second contamination due to those who responded to the scene, who were not quite equipped with the proper protective gear. Most hospital staff were unaware that people were coming from an attack with a toxic agent, and there were few decam decontamination measures taken. Many responders and staff at the hospitals got sick. But who were these individuals responsible for this chemical attack? Hayashi Okuo. He used to be a respected senior physician with the Japanese Ministry of Science and Technology. He specialized in heart and artery medicine. He grew to be one of the OMS leading members and was the Minister of Healing within the group. Hiroshi Kenichi, a well-educated physicist, he was at the high ranks of OMS Chemical Brigade and a key individual in their automatic light weapons development sector. Toyota Toru, another highly educated physicist. Before becoming a leading member in OMS Chemical Brigade, he was on his path to begin his doctoral program. Yokohama Masoto, a physicist who worked in electronic firms before becoming an OMS follower. He was the undersecretary of the cult's Ministry of Science and Technology and a leader of their automatic light weapons manufacturing arm. And Hayashi Yasuo, a specialist in the field of artificial intelligence, third highest position in the cult's Ministry of Science and Technology. The eyes were definitely on the cult after the attack. Even in the United States, two days after, the FBI launched an extensive investigation into them. They had a good amount of presence in the USA to raise enough concern for them to do so. Their official USA office was located blocks from Times Square in New York. Investigation of their facilities showed there was no illegal activities taking place in that specific area. In Japan, police raided several facilities, including Satyan 7, which was a shrine where they worshipped one of their entities. Investigators found that this facility housed a massive chemical production operation. They found it had the capability of producing 1,000 and thousands of kilos of sarin per year. It was not operating at the time of the raid, though. Though the cult tried to cover their tracks, the extensive raid by police discovered more than 200 forms of deadly chemicals and equipment needed for chemical warfare. Specialists estimated that they had enough to kill millions of people. Besides chemicals, they found millions of dollars worth of golden cash, large weapon arsenals, and fully stocked private hospital facilities. More chillingly low, several torture chambers and prison cells were also discovered, with some of those even having OM followers still locked inside. More than 200 followers were arrested during the raids, but Asahara was still in hiding at this point. When they found him, he had in his possession a large stash of money and gold bars. After the deadly subway attacks, many of the followers, especially the top cult leaders, were tried and charged with various crimes related to other criminal activities, as well as the subway attack. Asahara was charged with murder through the Tokyo subway attack, murder in the Matsumoto sarin gas attack, the Sakamoto family kidnapping, production of illegal drugs and substances, and the kidnapping and murder of at least 33 all members who attempted to flee the cult. Asahara continued to maintain his innocence through the entire court process. Though testimony from members continued to mount guilt onto him, they all confessed they were taking orders directly from him. Asahara and 12 of the top leaders were sentenced to death for their crimes. Asahara trial was one of the longest in Japanese history, which went on from 1996 to 2005 due to the large number of indictments and crimes he was being charged with. Asahara stayed smug in his trial and rather confident according to court bystanders. But his mood swiftly began to change when his close top leaders and other members began to turn on him. The star witness was none other than Dr. Ikuo Hiyashi, who punctured the sarin gas bag on the day of the subway attack. In February of 2004, after years and years of testimony, the panel of judges found Asahara guilty on all 13 counts of the indictments that included murder, attempted murder, terrorism, fraud, conspiracy, and illicit manufacture of chemical weapons and drugs. He would be executed by hanging. Along with Asahara, 12 other cult members were also sentenced to death by hanging. In July of 2018, 13 death sentences were finally carried out. July 6, 2018, Shoka Asahara was brought into the gallows in the Tokyo Detention House, where he was blindfolded, had a noose tied around his neck, and hung.